We're going to take a closer look tonight at a man's fight over a decision to allow his incapacitated wife to die. From 2003 to 2005, one woman's story captivated the country. Terry Schiavo. Terry Schiavo. Terry Schiavo. Spurring a national debate over the right to die. To deliberately starve her to death is an act of cruelty and ultimately it's murder. And the role of government in private life. Give Terry water! Give Terry water! On the week of the 10th anniversary of her death, a look back at the defining moments of the Terry Schiavo case. Terry collapsed one morning in 1990. Her heart had stopped. When she finally opened her eyes, doctors said she was not conscious. Over the next several months, she went from rehabilitation centers to hospitals and back again, each day getting occupational and physical therapy. A battery of tests, including MRI scans, showed brain function remained significantly impaired. After years of effort, Michael Scheibo agreed with doctors that there was no hope for recovery. Terry has made the same movements, the same noises, the same sounds for 13 years. Her parents felt otherwise. Please. Please, please, save my little girl. So the decision to end her life was debated in the courts and in the state house. Who's going to look out for this girl's rights? We have to. We don't make laws in this state based on emotion. Jeb Bush pushed to keep her alive. The governor of Florida says a comatose woman will not be allowed to die. He will order her feeding tube put back in. But the courts overruled the Florida law. Florida's Supreme Court struck down as unconstitutional a law passed to keep a comatose woman, Terry Schiavo, alive. Encouraging members of the U.S. Congress to take up the charge. Congress has jumped into the case of a brain-damaged woman in Florida today. And this judge in Florida want to pull her feeding tube and let her starve for two weeks. That is barbaric. A woman's life is at stake. And even the president. Extraordinary circumstances like this, it is wise to always err on the side of life. But the courts prevailed. Terry Schiavo's family and their supporters desperately searched for a way to force doctors to reattach the tube. It is increasingly clear that the courts will not willingly do that. And her husband was allowed to remove the feeding tube. Terry Schiavo has died. The saga is over. The debate about life and death continues. Ten years later, we remember the woman that made the nation ask. Who decides whether a person who cannot decide for themselves lives or dies?